I do not have a title to my to my preaching. I'm not good on titles, but I do want to welcome our Facebook and our YouTube family, those that watch us, and I hope that we get a lot of likes. You know, it's not about likes. I hope you like the word because it will transform you. And um, I'm surely praying that it does something amazing in this house today. So, you know, uh, where is it? Right here. This is my my baby. I have a, a couple of babies, you know. But this one has been um, with me for a long time, since 2004, given by my husband. I have my name right here, so nobody can take it away. <laughs> nobody can just, you know, stick with her. You know, her name is Rachel. Mar I'm mean, oh, sorry, Marino. Rachel Ramirez, little butterfly there. And, um, and when I have, I was like, who's that? <laughs> There's a baby in the house. And um, every time I have left her behind, you know, let's say church, because we left very excited about something. And I'm like, I'm like, oh my God, I'm home already. And I'm like, I love the Bible, you know. It's literally like myself, <laughs> I got to say. You know, you, you know, it's like that phone, you know. When you leave it, you have to go back, right? So I have the same passion, if not my first passion, because I didn't have a cell before I started to do that. You know what I'm saying? So my first passion was this here. And honestly, my message is going to be based on this wonderful book, you know, that has brought so much joy and happiness and deliverance and all the attributes that are in the Bible are here, right here, right here, right here. Whatever I am today is because of this. And whatever I'll be tomorrow, if I am in it, it will be because of this. You know what I'm saying? If anybody's of it spiraling the wrong way, you will read about yourself in here too. <laughs> but hopefully we're going from glory to glory to be like Jesus. Amen. 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 Because that's the goal of reading the word. This book is written to who? To the world? No. To believers. To the believers, right? I just want to make sure that we understand that this is not for, you know, the person under the bridge that is not saved. This is, you know, of course, it's, you know what I'm saying? It's the goal is for them to have a relation of who's in here and that they could adopt this. But nobody will not understand unless God what, reveals himself through the word, right? Mm -hmm. So it's written to what? Oh, to yeah. us, right? That's why it's the uh, Corinthians. It was the church of Corinthians, right? Mm -hmm. And you can see all the churches and, and even in Revelation that he speaks to all the churches, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we know that it's, it is for us. So I want to start with um, what I believe, okay? I believe that the word of God is absolute. How many of you believe that? Yes. Amen. Okay, and I just want to be like, you know, cliche because everybody says that. The word of God is absolute. You can say the word of God is absolute, but if you don't really believe it, you know, anybody could just bring a false doctrine and just, you know, leave you uh, wandering, right? I say that because when I first started, you know, my work, my work with Christ, a Jehovah Witness, you know, she uh, had some of her theology, and she started to tell me certain things, you know, and because I was a baby Christian, I, had, I didn't have enough level of the word, she threw a big bomb on me about the Holy Spirit. And, you know, I left there with such a burden and wanting to cry because I thought that, you know, you know, the Holy Spirit was a force, you know, it was like, you know, my belief of the Holy Spirit was a person. But I did not, I didn't have enough uh, word to, to, you know, if I could say it then to fight or to quarrel with her because I was just quarreling with her you know, trying to prove that the Holy Spirit was, you know, a person. And she was like, no, it's a force. And she won because I didn't have enough level of word to prove her wrong. So it's important that you know, you know, what's in here so you could give it to them because some people are armed and dangerous with wrong doctrine and could uh, beat you and leave you confused. So I experienced that as, as a baby Christian. And, 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 and in the mercy of God, as I was studying the word, God showed me you know, that he is not a, he's a person, that he has emotions, that, that he cares, that he has a nose, that he has a hand, you know? And it was amazing to know that he is the third person of the Trinity, right? Mm -hmm. So I couldn't tell that to Jehovah Witness, and I pray that so one day she will find the revelation in Jesus' name. But I believe that the word of God is absolute, and I couldn't tell her that then, you know? Even though I, you know, I, you know, I, I felt that it was true, but it was just like, I didn't have enough truth to, you know, to, to just, 
to fight for my beliefs. You understand what I'm saying? So it just let me confused about the thing that I thought was absolute. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Okay? If that makes sense, you know? So you cannot just say, you know, that the word's absolute because somebody says it. You have to read it and make sure that it's inside of you so that when someone comes to tell you otherwise, this will be a shield that you will know that you know because you have a what? A relationship with this word that anybody could just throw anything at you. And if you don't know it, you will, you will soon to find out because the Holy Spirit will what? Teach you according to the book of John. Okay? So no, you know, no intimidation. No need to break down or to get like, you know, you know, uh, shaking knee or anything like that. You know, God, God is God. So, if you don't know it yet, if you stay long enough, you will find out. So, yes, I believe that the word of God is absolute. It does not diminish in any way it's, to, you know, it, that it's total. It does not diminish any way it's totality. It's total, total truth that is in there. Okay, it's the total, it's absolute, but the absolute truth, nothing but the truth. So help me God, right? Okay. It is the absolute truth. The definition of the word Bible, I looked it up, and it says, is the, Bible, uh, this, this, hold on. the definition of the word Bible is the Christian scriptures, okay, the Christian scriptures cons consisting of the Old and New Testament. So that's the, one of the definitions. So I'm going to say it again. The definition of the Bible is the Christian scriptures consisting of the Old and New Testament. And that is true, right? That's why it seems to be the Bible, right? In its definition. Some call it, now we're gonna, I'm going to say how some call the, you know, the book. Some people call it the books of books, right? Others call it the Holy Scriptures. Others call it the good book. Have you heard it all, the good book? Yeah. That sounds like, you know, very, very too my knowledge that I always have heard it like that. And um, and literally, people will say the Bible is the King James Bible. Okay? Not that NIV, not that ESV, not that WhatsApp CEV. You know, is that King, I mean, like, this is the King James, and that's the Bible. <laughs> Nothing else. Okay? So people will say that's what they call the Bible. But the Bible itself has its own definition, right? Of what the Bible is. And I would like to look, uh, if we could put up John 1 1. Let me tell you what the Bible definition of the word is, or the Bible is. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. It says there, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. That is the definition of the Bible. I'm going to repeat it. The definition of the Bible is in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That to me is the definition of the Word of God. The Word of, you know, the Word, I want, I want, you, to, I want you to follow along with me, okay? Because for every word, okay, that says Jesus, I'm going to put the word there. You get me? Yes. Mm -hmm. For every word that says Jesus, I am going to put what? The, the word. word. The word is Jesus. The eternal, ultimate expression of God. That is the definition of the Bible. Hallelujah. The definition of the Bible to me is the word, okay, is Jesus Christ. That's the Bible. The eternal, ultimate expression of God. And I looked up this in my, in my study Bible that says, the phrase, the word was God, attributes deity. I said it right, deity? deity. Hallelujah. I said the word. Everybody, I struggled with that word. I said it right for the first time in my whole life. And I have it recorded on Facebook and YouTube. Hallelujah. Live. Amen. I said it right. So I'm going to try to say it again. The phrase, okay, the phrase, the word was God, attributes deity to the word without defining all of the Godhead as the word. Meaning that when you say the word, it just brings what? God into it just brings the whole picture of who he is, right? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, right? The Bible says that the, the word Jesus, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, but the word Jesus, the word, okay, 
He says in verse 4, can I get verse 4 of John? I think it's John 1, 4. It says, in him was life, and life, okay, and life, sorry. In him, that's what, yeah, yeah, then it goes, there it goes. It goes, in him was life, and the life was the life of men, okay? So that's the Bible. The Bible said, the, the Bible, this is the definition of Jesus. He is the light and the light, okay? So this is why when we read the word, it brings what? Life. life. But what also it brings? Life, right? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. I'm getting warm up because let me tell you, I was in all this and it just, just really was really amazing. One of the things about the word of God is that it's complete, right? Absolute, right? Mm -hmm. Anybody with me? Amen. It's perfect, meaning all, pretty much complete, right? When complete, perfect. It is pure. It's undivided. The word is undivided. It's undivided. I need you to understand that the word of God is undivided and adulterated. And I rebuke anybody, and I'm saying it very nicely. You know, I rebuke anybody that says that there is, you know, mistakes in the Bible. The only mistake is that you are the mistake. The only mistake is that you the, is the mistake. You know why? Because if you get in the word, you will be completely free to understand that it's complete and absolute. You will, your heart will be pure to understand that it is in its pure form, and you will leave that divided mind and become undivided about the absolute of what is in there. Why? Because it will transform you. The Bible is a transforming, what? Is that transforming what? I would like to say it will transform person after person that gets in there. If the Bible is not doing something for you, it's because you have not given yourself to be absolute to it. You have not committed yourself to be pure to it. You have not given yourself to be completely yielded to it. And you surely have not been, like I said, you know, you know, you be on the, you know, you have not given its undivided attention to it. So I always say that if you think the trick the um, an elliptical, a treadmill doesn't work, it's because you never got on it. You can never tell me the machine will work until you get on it. Okay? Because if you put it to work, it will work for you. So that's what I believe is the Bible. A lot of people don't do the homework, and it's not going to happen for one day. If you get to in the, ellipt uh, the elliptical or the uh, um, the um, what is it, a, a treadmill in one day? Will you see results? No, it takes commitment. But we want the word to just be like that, to transform us, and you don't go like that. I am sorry. I am sorry it doesn't work like that. I said that the word is complete, and I would like to look at the um, scripture, Isaiah 55, verse 11. Woo, he is complete. Hallelujah. It is complete. Where it says, so is my word that goes from my mouth. It will not return empty, but it will accomplish what I desire and achieve. Oh my God, achieve the purpose for which I send it. Meaning that his word will bring it full force in completion to the word that came out of his mouth. Amen. So you cannot say God is a liar. You will, you will never say that God is a liar. Because it will come back the way he said it. The word of God is perfect. John 1, 14. It says the word became flesh. And we know that Jesus was perfect in all his, all his form. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son who come from the father, full of grace and truth. So we understand that his word is perfect. Jesus was perfect. Yes, he was all men. But he was also God. And in his, in his, in his men, you know, in, in, his, in his humanity, he just worked perfection. And so he says that we are perfect. So be perfect. Because you see, it's not on us. It's on a relationship with God that helps us through the word to bring this perfection. Do you understand? Do you understand that he's requiring for you and I to be perfect as he's perfect? 
He will not demand something that he cannot perform. The only way for this to be about is if we allow him to do exceedingly, abundantly, all we could ask or think through the word of God. So yes, that perfection could be ours, and we shouldn't call ourselves short. Pure. Hadabashaya. Unadulterated is the word. 1 Peter 2.2. 2, it says, like newborn babies, crave pure, unadulterated spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow in your salvation. So how do you want to grow? How can you grow in your salvation? By the word. You know, if you want to be, if you want to let go of all impurities, if you want to let go of anything that is bringing all that, you know, adulterous feelings of, you know, idolatry and all that stuff, everything, just, just, just get in the word. And finally, what I said, the word is undivided. And this is Ezekiel eleven nineteen. I will give them an undivided heart, okay? Once the word hits right here, boy, oh, Jesus, have mercy. Once the word is incubated in your heart, anybody with me? Amen. He says, I will give them an undivided heart and put a new spirit in them. I will remove the heart of stone and give them a heart of flesh. You know what could do that? The word of God through Jesus Christ. Amen. So this is what the Bible could do for you. You know, it will bring you completion. It will make you perfect. It will take all the impurities of your life and everything that is adulterating your life and all this kind of crazy stuff, it will be removed, I promise you. But you know what? It will also bring you to complete, you know, in not being divided in mind. Your heart and your spirit, soul, and body will be linked to what he says. What, you know, you, 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 you won't question him. You won't question him. You will go 100% to what, you know, he already established in your life. You know, one of the things about the word of God is that it's settled. Okay? The word of God is settled. Hebrew 1, 1 to, to 3. It says, in the past, God spoke to our ancestor through the prophet at many times, at many times, and in various ways. But these last days, he has spoken to us by his son. You know, in the Old Testament, he talked us to the prophet. But right now, he's talking through us, through his son, through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Jesus, have mercy. Who he appointed heir of all things and through whom all he made the uni universe. The sun is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being. So the sun is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his glory, sustaining all things by his powerful word. Whoa, by his what? Word. Lord have mercy. His powerful word. This is, this is not just, just chump change. This is not a dusty Bible. This is gold. This is the representation of the glory of God here on earth. After he has provided purification for our sins through this word, we have purification of sin. Then he sat down. He said, it's completed. It's settled. It's already done. When you have the word in your heart, it is settled. He says, he sat at the right hand of the majesty in heaven hallelujah hallelujah that means that his word again is settled it means that it is finished there's other scriptures that psalms 119 89 says oh lord your word is settled in heaven i want you to grab a hold of that god's word is where settled where is settled in heaven, in heaven. okay Mark 13, 31 says, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word by no means pass away. Amen. Amen. Jesus, have mercy. I just feel his presence. Gotta touch his belly right here. My gut, because it's right there, the Holy Spirit. I repeat it. Heaven and earth, this will just go bye-bye. But his word will not go bye-bye. This word, you could be burned cremated. You could be buried. You could be wherever you are. And if you have this word, you have to come alive. Amen. Can I prove it to you? Wasn't Elijah that I 
after he did, somebody got through somebody in there, and because he had enough work, because he was the prophet, that body just went boom, back up. Hallelujah. Amen. Right. Doesn't the Bible say that the same spirit that rose Jesus Christ from the dead is inside of us? What is that? It is the word, the adulterated word of God that lives inside of us. That's the word. Oh, Rabbi Shia, the priest of alive. So it's settled. It is settled. It is settled. It's complete. It's perfect. It's pure. It's unadulterated. And it's undivided. Amen. But that is something that you have to have it here. Not by memorization, but by revelation. You can memorize. I know a lot of people that memorize the Bible, but their life stinks. It doesn't impress me that you know Genesis to Revelation. I may not know scripture, Bible, and verse, but let me tell you, may I walk in police. May I walk in please? We need Christians that walk this. Hallelujah. We need Christians that walk this. I could look at a person, I could see what their life is, his lifestyle is, because you know, we you know the services, oh I think that they're doing this, they're doing that. I want people to look at me and say, Where is she? Hallelujah. What? And God will say, Let me reveal it to you. Because I have, you see, the word, the word is inside of me, and it takes Jesus to, you know, that person to ask, who is this? And that voice that's on the other side, can I reveal it to you? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can I reveal it to you? Amen. Because this word is settled, and he's after humans, he's after souls. So when you are asking the word, you give an opportunity to somebody who the one the world inside of you. Even if you didn't have a time for that person to ask, she was different. Amen, amen. And that same spirit just go follow the person home and ask and ask until somebody goes, you know, like you just gave that seat, not even talking. You just showed up to the picture. Somebody else comes in and you know what? Oh, you have the same spirit. This happened to me. I tell you the truth. This happened to me at Walmart. And she goes, man, you all are the same. And I asked her, what do you mean, ma'am? She goes, all the evangelical, evangelical, evangelicals that I have met are being like you. And I say, praise the Lord. I didn't have the time to witness to her. I just said, I did something, something for her for the glory of God. And I said, lady, you don't need to know my name. You don't need to know anything. I just want you to doubt Jesus Christ. And she goes, oh, you were those people. I say, yes, ma'am, I am those people. <laughs> so you don't need to get my number. You need to just get a hold of the Bible and then dial it from Genesis to Revelation. He will come down for you. Hallelujah. As he just came down in Walmart. In the name of Jesus. Anybody with me? Amen. We represent the word. We Woo! are undivided. I am not undivided. I am settled. I am settled. I am walking every day to be settled in the word of God. Every single day I ask God for revelation of his word because it's the word that makes me alive. Yes. When I am not connected, you know you could decrease or increase in this matter? Yes. You know? It's like, it's, it's, let me just tell you something. If boyfriend and girlfriend, when they get married, after they're being engaged, do the same thing that they did as boyfriend and girlfriend and in, and, 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 and in their courtship and, and in their engagement and all this stuff, if they keep on in their marriage soon, you will Shoot, there will be no divorce rate. Right. Yeah. But we treat the Bible just like if we were, you know, courting it. And we, at first we are just looking at it and everything, and then we marry it. And then we just don't want to even see it. No, don't bring her flowers or anything. <laughs> no chocolate for the Bible. <laughs> it stinks. I do. I, I, I think about these things. I don't, you see, I am married to the word, but I keep the, you know, I keep the flame going, just like I'm trying to keep my marriage flame going. Hallelujah. Right, baby? <laughs> <laughs> I have a cloud of witness. <laughs> it takes work. It takes work to, to be a Christian. It takes work to be part of the bride. It takes work. It takes work. It takes work. It takes work. It, it does take work, man. It takes word. It takes word. It's nothing else but a word. Hi. I, I, I am sorry, but I just feel it. It's just amazing. Hallelujah. You see, the Bible says in Isaiah 40, verse 8, it says, The grass withers. How many have seen the grass wither? Yes. Okay? The flowers fade. How many have seen the flower fade? Uh, flowers fade. Yes. See, my husband bring me flowers in a couple of. You know, not even like a week and a half, they start just, woo, just going bye-bye. 
That's why I had to buy it so I could see it all the time. <laughs> I'm worried. <laughs> but the word of God stands Hallelujah. forever. Hallelujah. The word of God stands forever. It will not wither. It will not fade. It yes. will just speak year after year. People may come and gone. You know, Abraham came. Moses left. Everybody, you know, everybody did. And we're going to go in, you know, for he is still forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And he could have come for another billions of years. And you know what? He is coming soon regardless because his word is settled. Amen. Amen. Oh, but you know what? People say that, you know, you know, that he's coming since, oh my God, he even said that, you know, Abraham said was coming. You know, everybody said, you know, I'm saying, Abraham, you know, was expecting the Messiah probably then. You know, whatever he was expecting. He was expecting a baby, you know? <laughs> but the others were expecting a, a, a Messiah, you know what I'm saying? And then now we're expecting that, what? The return. The return, return of the King. King of Kings. And we're going to go feast. Woo! Hallelujah. Woo! But you see, everybody had their turn to wait for something. And you know what? It seems like it is tardy. It is tardy, but it's not. You know, everything is going according to plan. You know, and perhaps we, you know, we always want to be the people to go with the rapture. But what about if we are not? His word will be fulfilled, and one day we will know because every knee will bow and every word will come. He will confess that He's Lord, Amen. and we Amen. will know that He never lied. And his words were settled, and He was complete, and He was complete, and He was pure. Hallelujah! It is absolute. Anybody with me? Yes. Gosh, I can feel His presence. Hallelujah! The word sanctifies. It sets us apart. The word sanctifies. It sets me apart. That's why I am apart. That's why you are apart. The more you get into the word, the more we are you appear. You are a peculiar people, a peculiar nation. Do not try to blend in because you try to blend in, then you are worthy or you are heathen. But let me tell you, when you read more of the word, more of the word, you will become a peculiar person. And you know what? People will not understand you. People will think you're crazy. People will not like you. But you know what? They didn't like the word back then. And he didn't show up in the flesh. And they didn't like him. So you don't expect that the word in you will be any different now. You just got to stick to the word and birth what God has for you. Hallelujah. Just, just make up your mind. Amen. Make up your mind and set apart. Be set apart. If you have the spirit of rejection on you, you better rebuke it because it don't work up in here. Hallelujah. It don't work up in here. A lot of people will reject you and people will click. Uh, uh, right now people may say, no, whatever. I don't care because I have separated and I'm not going to get any better. I'm going to get crazier because I'm in love with God. And I'll scream and I'll perspire and my hair will go with this curly in a few minutes. But you know what? It's worth it. Amen. Amen. I cannot hide what I am. I am the word of God. Amen. And I strive every single day to keep this word alive because you know what? The enemy is after it. He's trying to prove me wrong. But greater is he that is in me because I am proven. I am proven in the word that if I keep my knees right here and reading that, I am guaranteed not to fall. I'm guaranteed not to fail because that's Amen. his promise. Amen. You may have tribulation. You may have all things, but God got you if you're standing in the rock of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I don't care. Hallelujah. I don't care what comes. Ay, ay, ay. You'll know that you'll be tested. It is not a mystery. It's how much word that you have that will keep you up. Yes. Amen. It's the word that will keep you up. It is your column. It is your brick. It is your foundation. It is your foundation. Hadabashia Rabakaya. Hadabakaya Rebishaya. John 17, 17. Let me put my hair up. Hallelujah. Sanctify them by your truth. Hallelujah. Mm, what is truth? Is true. Oh, your word. Yes, yes, I have one today. Hallelujah. Sanctify them by your truth. Hallelujah. What is truth? Hallelujah. For your word. You want to be separated. Oh, hallelujah. You want it to be you want to be separated? You need to sanctify yourself. Amen. You need to be, like I said, set apart. Oh, to get in that word. He will sanctify us with the word of truth. Amen. Creating a separation from the world. I want that. Hallelujah. You see, there is, there is no, oh my gosh. 
There is no war. There is, there, you see, there, there is war in the heavenlies. But you know what? When you step for truth, even though there's, you know, all this kind of stuff that is coming towards you, you know, there's a shield there. There's a shield. There's a shield. Oh, Rabbi Shaya. And I say there's a shield because if you know truth, you know that everything that is taking place is supposed to take place. How do you know? Because the word gives you comfort to understand that Jesus went through the same trials. Amen. As a matter of fact, he went to Gethsemane and he went to the cross before he got the crown. So he says that, you know what? Pick up your cross and follow me. So we, it's no mystery that we are going to go through, go through the same thing that Jesus Christ went through. So that's why he gives us that, you know, the scripture, the scripture says sanctify yourself. Set yourself apart. By what? By the truth. The word. The word. By the truth of the word. Because that's what kept Jesus from falling, right? He was all human. But what happened when he went up there in a time where, you know, the devil came to tempt him? What did he show? It was the word. It was the word of truth that came as a shield, that came as a sword, that came as a helmet, that came as a breastplate, that came as a shoe, that came, that came. He had word. He had word. Amen. He had word. He was set apart. It wasn't the devil that took him up there. The devil showed up to see, oh, let me see how much word do you got. Because the first man didn't have that much word. Oh. Oh. The first man had relationship, but he didn't have, he didn't have the word. It is the word that keeps us. It is the word that keeps us. Abraham didn't have enough word, but Jesus did. He was the word. It's good to pray. It's good to worship. But if you have no word, you have doing, you're doing you're doing that you're not doing anything. You're not being set apart. Because when you worship, you you worship with the word, right? When you when, when you pray, Lord, I'm fighting, you know, I'm fighting for this person. And what you have to give them? You have to give them the word. Amen. Are you getting me? Yes. We cannot divorce this word, this Bible of ours, in this last days. I came so that you could be so in love with the word of God because the word of God is what? Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 And we are losing our first love with Jesus because we're not in love with this. Oh. We are in love with this. And I have it in my Bible. Oh, I have my Bible in my app. Baloney. Baloney. Come see a, come somebody on another app. You will just drop the Bible and see where your heart is at. Your heart is distracted. And I'm not against this because it's a good tool. But let me tell you, it reveals the heart. It will tell you how divided, how pure you are, and how settled you are in heaven. Anybody with me? Yes. Amen. Oh, God is coming for your heart tonight. It's heart surgery. It's coming to bring that thing to the, to the, to, 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 to just, nasty, bring the nasty out. <laughs> For us to just really get in, in, in love with God's word. Yes. To take out the tongue, to, to just, you know, be consecrated and separated. Hallelujah. For him, therefore, I have here, therefore, come out of them. Be separated, says the Lord. Judge no unclean thing, and I will receive you. Hallelujah. He will receive Hallelujah. you. Where? Yes. Where the word is there. Hey. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Rabbi Shaya. You see, the thing is that it's time to do what the Word says. We can continue to read it. We can continue to listen to the Word. Hallelujah. To read the Word without stepping into its transformation, you're wasting time. You're reading the Word, but you're not stepping into that transformation, into its transformation in power. But I'm going to show you a little bit, you know, I'm going to show you how and why sometimes it's hard for us to get into this complete transformation power. But we can tonight if we disconnect from all the junk, right? Yes. Amen. I'm going to repeat Bring it. that. Bring it. I, want to, I want to invite you tonight to do what the word says. Amen. To do what the word says. We can't continue to read and listen to the word without stepping into it's transformation. Woo. Do not, this is John 1, 22, it says, do not merely listen to the word, okay? 
Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive. So when you listen to the word and you're not doing, you're deceiving yourself. It says it invites you, and it's not even an invitation, it's a command to do what it says in order for you to reap the benefits of their wealth. In other words, this is how it reads. I'm going to put now, it says the word, I'm going to put Jesus where it says word. I'm going to play around. This is what it says. Do not merely listen to Jesus and so deceive yourself. Do what he says. That's exactly what he says. John 1, 22 says, don't just merely listen to Jesus, but do what he says. Amen? Amen. Yes. Now, I want Jean to help me reading uh, Luke 22. And we're going to read... We're going to read the stories from the story from 13 to 49. We're going to just read the whole entire verses. 23. I think it's, um, it's 24. Is it 24? Yes, 24, 13 to 49. Maybe I just gave you the wrong one before. But anyway, it's 24. It's 24. 13 to 49. Okay, got it. Okay, great. So here we go. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked, among, walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things, he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. He said to them, how foolish you are and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as, he, as if he were going farther. But they urged him strongly, stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself, himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, Why are your hearts troubled, and why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. And while they still did not believe it because of joy and amazement, he asked them, Do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. He said to them, this is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, this is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I am going to send you what my Father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. So we know that the word of God is settled, right? Amen. And God is inviting us, right? To just, just be transformed by it, right? Just to do it, right? Hallelujah. Jesus himself, Hallelujah. right? Hallelujah. And to be sanctified, to be separated, right? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to show you some things that <clears throat> really, really was the, 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 
the, oh my gosh, how can I say that? This was the, the reason, for lack of a better word, that I just started to just go deeper on the word of God. I am, um, well, don't want to get there because it's just, it just, just messes me up. But this means so much to me. And uh, I'll share it towards the end about that, why it means so much to me. Yeah, I will not get tired of, uh, 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 of giving that testimony. But I want to start, let's start, let's get back to the, to the, thir read 13, 14, and we'll, I'll read 15. <clears throat> now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked, okay, and discussed these things with each other, they were talking with each other, okay? Jesus, and I want to put, remember Jesus, I'm going to put the word, so I want you to, 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 to now walk with me. It said, Jesus, the word himself, came up walking along with them. So imagine Jesus, the word, and in this case, when we are talking, when we are doing stuff, we have Jesus, we have the word everywhere we go as Christians. Okay? Think about it. I want you to get a revelation tonight. They really had the actual Jesus. We have the actual Jesus in form of word. So Jesus... Jesus walks with me daily. In this case, as they talked, as I talked to Aisha, as I talked to Jean, as I talked that we are talking, these things, whatever is happening in my life, okay, with each other, we're talking with each other about things that are happening in, your, in my life, in your life. Jesus himself came up. He comes up in our conversation and walk along with us. So every time when we're doing something, we should have conviction of anything, whether good or bad. That's what the Bible says, talk in Psalms and, you know, because the word is supposed to be here. I cannot pervert the word. He's going to get contrived and offended, calling the Holy Spirit, which is Jesus himself too. How can Jesus is the Holy Spirit. Everybody's the same. You understand what I'm saying? Because it says, I better leave because I have to bring who? Holy Spirit. So when you deal with Jesus, uh, the, uh, the Holy Spirit revealed Jesus and he reveals through his word. So Jesus, let's go back to the scripture 15, as they talked and discussed the, these things with each other, Jesus, the word himself, came up and walked along with them. Verse 16, but they were kept from recognizing the word. They were kept, sometimes we're kept from recognizing the word. You're asking God for revelation, but there's a reason why God is not completely telling you things. I came to tell you tonight. You're pounding the heavens, and God has already said, well, I am walking with you. I already heard you. And he asked you this question. I don't want to go and ask you the question just yet. But he says, <laughs> but they were kept from recognizing him. Okay? They were kept from recognizing Jesus, the word. Hebrews 5, 11 says, Concerning him, the word, we have much to say. Much to say. And it is hard to explain since you have become dull of hearing. I don't want to become dull of hearing in my daily life. Every single second. I didn't notice that I didn't say minutes. I say second. I live my life a second at a time. I will live in a second. I will not live in a minute. I will live in a second. My last breath will be in a second. So I live my life a second at a time. Walk in this world a second at a time, knowing that I could make a mistake in a second. So I, and I'm telling you, I say this with trembling and fear because this is how I try to relive my life. Concerning him, the word, 
We have much to say, and it is hard to explain. I don't want God to ever feel like he has to, that it's so hard for him to explain what he's trying to convey, because why? You have become dull of hearing. Matthew 13, 15 says, For these people's heart have grown callous. They hardly hear with their ears, and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their, understand with their ears, and turn that I would heal them. That is freaky. And yes, we can be walking this journey as Christians and have a callous heart. Mark 8, 17 says, aware of, the, aware of their conversation, Jesus the word asked them, why are you debating about having no bread, no word? Why are you debating on having no word? Do you still see? Sorry, do you do you still not see or understand? Do you have such hard part? I'm gonna repeat it. Aware of the of aware of their conversation, Jesus the word asked them, Why are you, Harabashaya, debating about having no bread, having no word? Why are you debating that you have no word? Do you still not see or understand? Do you have such a hard heart? So God could be walking with you and what keeps him from, from all these things to get to you is you, is you, is you, it is I. Verse 17, it says, aware of their, of their conversations here, Jesus, the word, asked them, what, that's the, that's the last one, but anyway, he's, he's going to ask the question here too. <laughs> yeah, he's the question. He asked them, Jesus, the word, asked, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood, they stood still and their phrase downcast. You know how many times God have asked you and you're like, Lord, why don't you speak to me? And God has been talking to you all this time. Except that we are in Hebrews 5.11, we are in Matthew 13.15, and we are in Mark 8.17, and God has asked all those things and stated all those things because of our heart. Because God has spoken to us in his word, and yet, a John 10 says, are you my sheep and you don't believe me? My sheep know my voice. My sheep know my voice. Are you getting this tonight? Yes. This is always talking, according to John. It's revealing God every single minute yes. if you're in it. Yes. Yes, it is. A lot of people say that God doesn't reveal or tell you what's going to happen. Then the word will be alive because it says, according to Amos, it says that he reveals everything to his prophets. What is the prophet if not you and I about our future and about our present and about our past? If God has not said anything, because that's what the word says. Now, this, the reason why we don't listen is because we are hard-hearted and we think God will speak when he's been shouting in our ears and walking with us, saying, why are you so hard of hearing? Like I say, this freaks me out. In reverence, in fear of God. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still. They faced their faces downcast. One of them named Cleopas asked him. He asked the word. Now the word is talking to him and Cleopas just turns around and talks to the word back. Are you the... I like, I like to say, you know, emphasize, this is my emphasis. Are you the only visitor? Are you the only visitor? <laughs> Are you the only visitor, let me give you an attitude, in Jerusalem, that's not how it says it over there, it says to Jerusalem, and do not know that things that have happened there in, there in these days. You don't know what's going on, man? Dude, you don't know? Muchacho! But oh, Pana, tú no sabes. You know? You're the only one that don't know. Verse 19. 19. 19. <laughs> <laughs> Verse 19. What things the word says, Jesus? He says, 
Jesus, the word, about Jesus, the word of Nazareth. Okay, the, the, about Jesus, which is the, the word, remember? Of Nazareth, they replied. Jean, can you read 19 to 25 now? This is, listen to this. This is what Cleopas or whoever answered back to Jesus. Okay, listen. It gets good. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before word. God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels, who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it, just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. Yeah, it's 24. Now, I'm going to read 25 for you with Jesus in it, being the word. He, the word, said to them back now. You see, all that he said, they explained everything that was happening. They really, you know, God gave them an opportunity to reveal their hearts. God gives us the opportunity to speak back to him. Isn't that cool? He says, even if I know the words are going to come out, I want to hear it from you. So here goes the word and says, <laughs> and said, what things? And then Cleopas go explain all this stuff, right? And heart x-ray. B, 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 can I tell you what's wrong with you? He says, the word said to them, how foolish you are and how slow according to what I read before, right? Of heart, to what? Believe. Believe. All the prophets, all the what? Prophets. All the prophets, okay? I call it the messenger of the word. So you see, not only is Jesus talking, but he sent people, living colors, to tell you, you didn't understand what you haven't heard? Let me tell you what things are happening. So God brings a fellow brother and sister to tell you what's up. But you still didn't believe it. You didn't believe it in a spiritual sense. You didn't believe it when the person came to tell you in the prophetic. Okay? What they spoken. So he called them slow of heart to believe all the prophets, all the word. He says, Is that 26? Because I think I'm, I just two. I just <laughs> okay. Did, let me see. Oh yes, because I forgot to put the six there. Did not. Hallelujah. Did not the Messiah? Did not the Word have to suffer? Okay. The Word Jesus had to suffer these things and then enter into His glory. This is the glory of God. Hallelujah. Amen. You want to see God's glory? You, I always say, God, I want to see your glory. Do you want to see God's glory? Yes. How much time are you spending in the Word? Remember when, when, when Rabbi Shai, do you understand when Moses wanted to see God's glory? Where did he have to stand on? On a rock of the Word of God, and God passed him with all his goodness. That is Christ Jesus. That is Christ Hallelujah. Jesus. You want to see the glory? Get on the Word. Get in the Word. Yeah. Well, you see why they couldn't see the glory? They couldn't see Jesus. They couldn't see the word because they're unbelief. So we read the word. We hear the prophets. And it's like, okay. And it's look like if you, you know, like when, you know, like somebody's 120 pounds, you know, I'm sorry, 210 pounds above and they want to lose like, you know, like, you know, you know, if they're 5'2 and they're really overweight and they want to be to like 100, let's say in their case, 130 to 100, 130, 135 pounds, okay? average, right? Let's say. And they look at it. And they look at the magazine and they look at all the instructions. And they have heard all the prophets, you know, and everybody's speaking about it. But it seems like, ah, uh, ah. Uh. And sometimes we read the word like that. I am here. But ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. And we read it with unbelief like it will never happen to you. Like, you see, don't you know that when God says something about you, he means it? He means it? That when you pick up the scripture and he says, 
that all things will work together for the good, that is not for, it is for everybody, but that word just became personal to you, and that if you stand on it, you will see the glory of God. I don't know if that makes you excited, but I know that there's situations in my life that the only way to become unplugged, undone, is for me to put the word and believe it and do not waver because it is absolute, it is complete, to do exceedingly, abundantly, all I could ask or think and have me delivered because his word will not come back void. Because yes. if he said it to you, if yes. he said it to me, oh, it will come to pass. It's, it's absolute. absolute. Amen. Amen. But we are dull of hearing and we don't believe. God said to the disciples all the things that they were happening in their lives. They were living it for crying out loud. They were in the act of it. Jesus was crucified. God was prophesying his, his, his three days. And he talked about it. He ate with the bread. They gave him the bread and everything. All the time God was announcing his death. They couldn't see it because God said, you are, oh my God, slow. What is it? Slow, slow of heart to believe. All this time, the word being push, oh, push, push. You know what? Well, you know what it says at the beginning of 15? What did he say at the 15? Please, 15. Ho. Ho, Jesus. Is it here? Hold on. Let me get it here. No, 16. But they were kept from recognizing his voice. Sometimes... If you're going to make a fool of yourself and have so much responsibility, God will keep you from the truth. God will keep you from the truth until you let go of unbelief. Do you get me? Yes. I'm, I, that's why I got so excited. Because you know what? The truth of your life is right there. Your, re, your, your, your revelation is right there. It's right there. But are you, can I ask you a question? Are you, in verse 16, but they were kept from recognizing his word. Even though God spoke it to you, has he kept it from, because why? Because of your unbelief? You see, belief without faith is impossible to please it because faith is what activates your miracle. Woo! Look around you. The woman with the issue of blood, she was. She said it. She went for it. That's right. She went to grab the word after she said, if I could only touch the hem of his garment, it is a promise in her heart. But she had to activate it how? By touching the word and believing it. Amen. Hallelujah. You have the word. You know what? But you know what God has said? You know what? She's just going to go around and around until the revelation comes. Until the moment that she asks. What do you mean she asked? I'm gonna show you. Actually, I'm not gonna show you because this is about this gonna be a part two to this message for next week. <laughs> so you you know, you gotta tune in or come in. <laughs> I'm, I'm here, gonna, I'm here. I'm just gonna work with what I got right now. But let me tell you, on believe. And he, the word, did not do any miracles there because of their lack of unbelief. Your unbelief, and Matthew 17 and 17 says, your unbelieving and perverse generation, Jesus the word replied, how long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? I feel that very personal when I don't get things. Because I'm sure that God has screamed certain things over and over. And the thing is that I don't believe that he can do all things. Because yes, I believe that the word is absolute. But do I walk it? That's why James says what? Faith without works is dead. And we are walking dead. Because either we have faith with no works or we have works without no faith. And we are lacking what? Oh, Rabashaya. Breakthrough. You're unbelieved and perverse. When you are not acting according to God, you are a believer and you are perverse. And that's Jesus that replied back to them. How long should I stay with you? God was not far. God is there. He says, how long should I stay with you? Don't you know I have the word? If you grab a hold of me, virtue will be released. Virtue will be released. How much virtue have you experienced lately? Or has it always been kept from you? Think about it. 
lying? Is it, is it being kept from you because of your heart? Because of your slow of heart to believe? Unbelief stops us from complete. And we know that the word is absolute and complete, right? But it stops the word from completion. The only thing that stops the word from completion is unbelief. The word went to his city in Jerusalem. I, mean, I, think, not, I think it was where, where Jesus went and he was his, his city. And he couldn't do no miracles there. Because why? Unbelief. Unbelief. And the word does not come back. Boy, he's healer. Healer, healer was there. But nobody wanted it. You perverse generation. You unbelieving generation. How long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring that boy here to me. Bring that situation here to me. Bring that bill here to me. Bring that sickness here to me. Harabashaya. Another thing that stops woo, the word, not only on belief. Can I tell you what stops? Let's go to 36. Look what happened. While they were still talking about this, Jesus the word himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. Fear. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. <laughs> why are you troubled? And why your doubt rise? Listen to where it rises in your minds. Is your mind captive with fear? Because fear, you will never see the completion of your word in your life. As a matter of fact, fear will interfere, alter, it will destroy the excellence of God's complete revelatory power in your life. Yeah. I'm coming to a theater near you. Hallelujah. <laughs> it will block the prophetic. You know how many words of prophecy are in your life? But fear, fear why? You believe more in the fear. Oh, that is a ghost. That is a real flesh Jesus before you. Saying, it is I. Why are you so slow? Move on it. Because I said it's yours. Hallelujah. It will be blocked by the pro it will block the prophetic. It will blur your vision. They, Jesus was there, but they didn't believe that he came back. And so they thought it was the ghost. ghost. It blurred your vision. How many, you know, God told you something of, of a vision and you see a blurry. It looks like it's a far thing, but it's right there. It will blur your vision, it, your faculties, your ability, your capability, your po your possibilities, your power, your potential, your potential, uh, your potential. Pot you know what that word I mean. Yeah, you said. Yeah, but your potentiality. Boom, my fool. But all of those things will be blocked because of fear. You will never spread your wings. And everything is with the word of God. You have not because you have asked not. And who you don't ask, you don't ask the word. Because if you ask the word, the word is walking with you. And all he's telling you right now and asking you, let go of the unbelief. Check, you don't have to check your eyesight. It is I. It is I. Yeah. What have you been thinking? What have you been talking? Is the word of fear or is the word of faith? What have you been saying? What have you been declaring? Because whatever it is, a word is a word. Whether it's spoken in fear or it's spoken in faith. But your words will come out. Mm. Amen. This is a word. This is, let me tell you, your word is on words. The word is on words. Adam and Eve did not punch the enemy in the, in, in the garden. It was not a fist fight. It was a word fight. It was so such a word fight that the only way Jesus to end it, he had to say, it is finished. Mm. He had to speak it out. Because he didn't say it will stay for eternity. Mm. So if a word goes out and you don't fulfill it, that word doesn't come that void because if you have a son or you have a daughter, God has the potential to bring it up with the other son or daughter if you don't step on it. His word doesn't go to waste. You go to waste, you foolish generation. When there will be somebody out of your loins that will come and say, oh, I don't know why I'm here. Because you know, how can I prove this to you? Abraham heard, Isaac heard, Jacob heard, and they fulfilled the promise. Hallelujah. Oh, a nation. And we're still on the 12th tribe. Oh, Rabbi Shaya. Oh, 
you to say, today's the day that I take on a blurry mission. I will not continue to think that this is a ghost because the only ghost is here is the Holy Ghost. Yes. And I'm about to move in what God success for me. Yeah, I told you I had a word because I expect to live this one. Craft your own daughter. Thank you, man. Man of God. When he we go to the Bible, I don't know what CD, CD sorry, or, or you know, tape. I don't know where was it. When he wiggled this word and says, dare to make it real. Men of God, I am walking to this word. I hope you get this. Praise God for your life. Give honor to my honors to and may I pass it down. This is what the answer, dare to make it real. Amen. Dare to make it real. Be passionate. Be zealous. Because the word is Jesus. And Jesus never fails. Amen. You failed. I failed. But he will never fail. Amen. Huh? Oh, you cannot preach that. You know, people say don't shout. But I understand T.D.J. very much. Being animated because you cannot say, I don't care if you put yourself in the socket. You will not go like this. Oh, no. You will jump. I've been on the trick table a couple times. So I know. I've been on the do many times. In the Holy Ghost and in the natural, it's both the same. Hallelujah. You don't stay passive. It's a violent shaking when it hits your core. Yep. And you know that God is there. Saying there's change. There is a change that is beyond you. There is a change that is beyond your intellect. It's the change that comes from trusting God and His Word and getting closer to the Word and making it to come to pass. Oh, Rabbi Shaya, if I could just touch the hymn of His Word tonight, I will be whole. I will be healed. I will be delivered. Yes, yes. Verse 39 says, Look at my hands. Some of us want proof, and God is so gracious to say, listen, I am about to show you some proof. Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me. Touch the word. The word is tangible. The word is tangible. The word is this is created by the word. Everything you're sitting on, that's granted that, that, that Aisha gave me last week, it was created by the word. This is created by the word. Every material that we have in this, in this, in this, in this, in this globe is created by the word. Everything that we have, everything that we have is created by the word. Everything that holds everything together is the word. Oh, Rabbi Shai, I am put up together. Oh my God, because of the word. Amen. It is the word that keeps us together. It is the word. You know what? It is the word. Even in the evil, 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 even under, under, the, under the earth. It is the word that keeps it together. Under the earth, the heat, everything. It is the word that keeps it together. It's Christ Jesus. Amen. We cannot make it without the word. People blaspheme the word. I'll be concerned. You know, people may be ignorant, but you know what? People perish in ignorance. It doesn't exclude you from saying words that will kill you. So be careful what you say because what you say is what you eat and you live. Ah, Just because you don't believe that the word says that out of your mouth you shall eat for good, you know, for, for, good, for, for life unto death. I don't care if you don't believe it, but you keep loving up and you're going to find out. Perhaps you need, you, you need that, you, you, may, you, you may come with a revelatory word of that word soon enough. But God says, look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. When he had said, when the word has said this, he showed them his hand and feet. Verse 41. And while they were still, let me just because I don't know why if I did something with <laughs> And and while they still did not believe, okay, and let me tell you, everything is in the word. Listen to this. And while they still did not believe, because I believe it, because of joy and amaze, he answered them, do you have anything to, uh, anything here to eat? And you know what I found out? You know when God does something extraordinary for you? And you say, oh my God, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. That's where he's at. Have you ever said, I'm, and I have, I'm learning to say, I believe it, I believe it, I believe it. You know that I say that, I believe it. Because that's exactly what they said. 
God showed up and they were able to see that he was in the flesh. They were so excited that they said, I can't believe. And sometimes we speak out of our own hearts. I still couldn't believe it. <laughs> I want to encourage you tonight. She goes, she's encouraging us. <laughs> I want to encourage you to fall in love with God. I want you to know that he's breathing on you. That your answer is not far, your answer is right on your lap. Yes. That for every, literally, literally, for every problem, if we stand up in the scripture, the scripture, it will be complete. Yes. It will be complete. It will come to pass. It will come to pass, Aisha. Hallelujah. Amen. It will come to pass. I said, I'm going to go back to 28 now of the other, uh, as they approach the village. As they approached the village to which they were going, the word, Jesus, acted as he were going further. Here, when the two guys were walking, Jesus is like, okay, guys, I see you. The word was just moving along, going. Tell your neighbor, don't let the word pass you by tonight. Verse 29, it says, But they urged, they urged him strongly. Please, next time you grab your Bible, urge him strongly. Woo! Stay with us. Stay with me. For, the, uh, for it's nearly evening. That day is almost over. So the word went in to stay with them. When you plead to God, he, you will not be denied. Plead him. Show me. Reveal me you. Reveal me you. Reveal me my circumstances. Reveal me. I don't want to be lo no longer slow hard. I want, it, I want this word to be so real. Like people that go into their horoscope and believe in Atta. You know that? People just wake up you know, to, the, to, the, to their horoscope and they make it happen. I had a friend like that. She couldn't get any, that she will fulfill the horoscope. And if I look back to that, how much more do I have here to fulfill? Ooh. And that is really for life. Hallelujah. It is things to think about. People having so much application on the evil side. All the applications that we have, you see, people that do wicked things and they stand on something, it is because if we as human, because the Bible says, you know, if we if we if we believe something, you know, if, you know, if we believe something, it shall come to pass. But that also works in the evil side. You see people that are doing crazy stuff, and they just say, Well, my gosh, how could they achieve that? Because God says we can do all things. And he didn't say it was only for us Christian of that thing. He created us to do all things. Let me tell you, how do you know that? Because the Bible said that sort of Bible, they had to just, why do we speak Chinese? Why do we speak Creole? Why do we speak Spanish? Because if human do anything, they will achieve it. Because it's inside of us. We are like Jesus. Nothing is impossible. If you believe that you can have it. That goes for evil and that goes for good. And that goes because of the word that you believe. But imagine the word that is Jesus. If you believe it, you'll be unconquerable. You will receive. You will receive. If the world is receiving, oh my goodness, what is up with me? If it hasn't been working for you, it's not because of God. It's because of your belief and your fears. So I want to challenge you tonight. Even if you don't understand it. Even if you can't see it. Even if you can't perceive it. <laughs> Even if you haven't, if you have heard it for the hundredth time, even if you have tried it before, even if you have seen it as a ghost, even if you can't even look, even if you can sense it, urging strongly tonight to stay. I tried you before, Lord, but tonight I urge you, please don't pass me by. I want to do this over. I want to start this relationship over with the word, with Jesus. But I, no, 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 hear me right. 
Some of us have been ignoring the voice of God and we need to reconcile the voice of God. How do you know that? Because the Bible says that my sheep know my voice and another one they will follow. That scripture wouldn't be there if, if, if some sheep don't follow another. Let me just tell you something. Hold on. When I go walking in the morning in prayer, there's a gentleman and there's a gentleman in the park that comes with this. Excuse me, I don't, I'm not too good with cars. But like a little wagon. What is those cars that look like? Like my car, what is my, like my, the, like, you know those kind of cars? Whatever. He comes in a car. He comes in his little car. And in the park, I'm not <laughs> throwing him on the bus. He says, do not feed the animals. But there's a whole bunch of cats in the, in the park. A bunch of cats. A, I mean, hello, if you want to adopt one, let me just tell you. <laughs> Call me. I'm going to pick one for you. I mean, there's a whole bunch of cats in that park. So, he comes in, he drives in, and you see, I mean, the, 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 the cats are scattered within the woods. You can see them sometimes in the road, but they have a lot. I'm talking about a lot. When he drives, I kid you not, they know the motor of the car. And you see them coming like this, following the, following the, the car, boom, 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 yeah. to wherever he's going to park. I said, you know what? I was just like, the Lord, I want to be like that. I want to be like that. That when you pass, Lord, wherever I am, I am running for my lion, for my life, to my lion of Judah. Because I see them little cats, and I just think my, to him, that's the lion of Judah. They meow. Their salvation is here. <laughs> I'm like, sometimes, let me tell you, sometimes he doesn't come. I don't see him, like, he comes, like, two days in a row. I'm like, somebody else is going to be feeding them. But you know what? And when he comes, that, those cats love this. And I made a recording today, but it was too far to show you guys how one cat, when he was leaving, when he was living, when he was, not only do they know the motor, they know him. So he was running, and there were the cats following him. Aww. And I was just like, Lord, I want to be like that. I want, I want, I want to, I want to be like that with you. I want to know your scent. I want to know where you move. I want to know where you be at. Because literally. What brings that relationship is because yes. they get fed. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. The reason why he has a relationship is because there's food in between them. Yeah. The only way for you to have a relationship with God and run to him is you know the food. Amen. The milk. The milk. The, the, the where is it? The uh, unadulterated. Where is it, Jeannie? You were the mad daddy with the scriptures. Where's the adulterated milk? You know where? It's, it's right there somewhere, right? It's Peter. Peter, Peter something. There we go. Uh -huh. Like new babies crave pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. And I tell you, those cats are, have grown up in their salvation. They know who their master is and they run after him because somebody's feeding them, hallelujah, their milk. So tonight, I am done. So uh, next week, I promise you to get you deeper in this thing. Amen. 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 But I want to just tell you something. And I just can't pronounce his name. His last name. But his name is John E. I want to just put it there. Okay? John E. And I want to bring some tips on, the, on deliverance. Okay? This is what he says. Okay? And I... I want to read something. I thought I was finished, but just give me a few seconds. Because you see, in order for you to get your breakthrough, and once you start feeding on this, you need to understand that there's, a, there, there's things that need to move out of you. Okay? And only the word will bring it about. So I'm going to read, I mean, Jesus is going to read for us here. Please, I want you to listen to this. Because this is what really has, the, the, I wouldn't be so in love with the word. I wouldn't be so in love with the word and be so attached to it if it wasn't because of what I know what the word can do. And I want to show you in scripture what happens when you don't have the word. Okay? So I want us to, to go look at Luke 11. Okay? And we're going to start reading from verse 14 to the 26th verse. 
first. And then we're gonna go, I think it's that. Yeah, we're gonna read the whole thing and then I'm gonna just show you something. Go ahead. Jesus was driving out a demon that was mute. When the demon left. Okay, hold on. I just wanna, on this case, I just wanna start with this. Remember that Jesus is the word. So put in this here. The word was driving out what? Okay. How do you drive out a demon? The word. With the word. Okay. You don't want demons in your life? Well, you need to have. I'm just going to start from the, the beginning. You need to get in the word. Woo. You want to be free? Get in the word. If you feel like you're like all burning up in the morning when you go and wake up, get what in is the it? Word. Get in the you word. don't have enough word. <laughs> you don't have enough word. The word is guaranteed you to bring you joy, peace. Hallelujah. That's what the word Hallelujah. does. Yes. 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 Jesus dri driven. Jesus was driven out. No, Jesus, the word was driven out. A driving, demon driving, driving out a demon. Sorry, I am too excited. That's why yeah. I want you to read because I will become <laughs> unglued right now. Go ahead. And you use any time that you find Jesus. Can you put the word there? Okay, there we go. Let's do it. Let's get excited. Woo! The word was driving out a demon that was mute. When the demon left, the man who had been mute spoke, and the crowd was amazed. But some of them said, By Beelzebul, the prince of, prince of demons, he is driving out demons. Others tested the word by asking for a sign from heaven. The word knew their thoughts and said to them, any kingdom divided against itself will be ruined, and a house divided against itself will fall. If Satan is divided against himself, how can his kingdom stand? <laughs> I say this because you claim that I drive out demons by Beelzebul. Now if I drive out demons by Beelzebul, by whom do your followers drive them out? So then, they will be your judges. But if I drive out demons by the finger of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. When a strong man, fully armed, guards his own house, his possessions are safe. But when someone stronger attacks and overpowers him, he takes away the armor in which the man trusted and divides up his plunder. Whoever is not with the word is against the word, and whoever does not gather with the word scatters. When an impure spirit comes out of a person, it goes through arid places seeking rest and does not find it. Then it says, I will return to the house I left. When it arrives, it finds the house swept clean and put in order. Then it goes and takes seven other spirits more wicked than itself, and they go in and live there. And the final condition of that person is worse than the first. Yeah, you start with 26. First story. Okay. So if you could see the whole story, if you think about the demons and everything, how they become stronger, it depends on what word you mean by it. So it's word against word. You see, if you're with a word, it cannot be divided. But when you put another word, and you agree with that word, that kingdom cannot fall. Amen. You're getting me, right? Amen. So if I am agreeing with the thing that I'm watching, words are coming out through that TV, words are coming out through that music, and I'm agreeing with that demon that is talking through there, are you getting me? Yes. Mm -hmm. I need to agree with that kingdom for that kingdom to come here. Once I let Jesus come in and he would draw out that kingdom because of the word that he puts in me is the word that brings it out. When you have the wrong word and you bring out the right word, this word stronger, it will bring him out. It will Amen. kick him out. Amen. It will kick him out. Do you get me how you become free? Yes. It, what, why the world is in bondage is because they have words that bind their mind. Yes. When you bring the word of God, you become free. And it's got, the demons got to speak you out and speak you out because now you're against his kingdom. You're not agreeing with a word that, you know, you should drink or you should smoke weed or you should shack or you should do, you know, all this kind of crazy stuff that I used to do. When the truth came that I am not an adulteress or that I am not a fornicator, then, I, you know, the word came in and I had to make up my mind. And that fornicating spirit had to come out because what? Now Jesus has stepped in. Anybody with me? Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. So the word drives out the demons because the word of truth in your life. 
seeing now, please. This is what happens. Now when the spirits get out, this is what they do. Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. When an impure spirit comes out of a person, it goes through air places seeking rest and does not find it. So do you understand that the spirits that came out of me in 1994, they are going around. They are not in somebody else's body. You will wish to do that because then that means that you'll be going free. But they, they, they're looking for arid places and they come to see from time to time how is you. How is you? How do they, what they come to see? They come to see how much words you have. How you kept your house furnished. Have you put the Bible away? Are you looking at other at, at things that you used to look at? You get me? Mm -hmm. When an impure spirit comes out of a man, it goes through arid places, seeking rest. That means that he's, they're weary and does not find it. Then he says, I will return to the house I left. When he arrives, knock, knock, he finds that the house is swept clean and put in order. When Jesus came into our hearts, right? And we put this, started to put this word here. This was taking out all those things, spilling it out, right? Like I said, the demons were coming out because the word is there, okay? He's cleaning house, okay? Jesus stepped in. But Jesus expects you to be allowing him to stay. In other words, like that, shoot at, my, shoot at my lady, you put a chair, you put a bed, you put a lamp, and you make room for the word. Amen. But if you, if, the, if Jesus comes in and just cleans house, but he's vacant, that demon is going to say, whoa, it's swept, let's party! And he's going to go get seven more demons worse than him. Because you know what? Now it's going to be war. I didn't get, he says, I, they're not getting out so easy next time. So that's why the Bible says it's better, what? To not know him than to know him. Because why? Because those demons are there saying, you ain't coming to get me. They're territorial. That's why. When I became free from those demons and I saw them coming out, because the first thing that God did, and I would repeat myself, that's why I love the word so much, because I saw the power of the word. When I stopped putting the word, and I still was not free from the spirit of fear, and all the spirits that I had within me, I was getting close to the my second deliverance. I had, I had like, I was like Maria Magdalene, whoever, you know, that, that so many demons came out of her. So I had like about one, I had three, I had three literally, uh, exorcism, exorcism, I had three of them. And one, my final one was at my sister's house. And that one, out of all of them, that the, the men of God said, started asking the, asking the demons questions. And I was aware, and the reason why I was aware, I believe, is because I had so much word. I was, re I was already uh, like, about, like about nine months or something of being Christian, and I was reading the word, and I was just, I was eating the word, so my intellect was open. Well, those things were still there. And the reason why I saw deliverance is because I said, there is something that is not right inside of me. It, it moves me. I, I, I am doing something and my feet is moving and my arm is moving and, I don't, and I'm not moving it. And I'm, and I'm not thinking. And all of a sudden, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking crazy stuff. And it's fearful stuff. And it's tormenting. So he goes, come back tomorrow. Do you understand when he said that those demons that night were just like freaking out and I couldn't sleep that night? I was like, why couldn't he just do it right there? So, you know, I saw like 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, and all. And then he was just like, he, I mean like, come on, just let's get it over with. So when I got to see him, I was just like, okay, and I'm gonna show you what the, our actions and our words mean. I know when the spirit of fear came into my life. And it was, I'm gonna tell you, and I'm gonna tell you right here, be very open, so that if you ever relate to anything like this about being like, oh my God, you're so, you know, be so radical. We, 
you know, what do you mean? We cannot say anything. You be careful what you say because what you say might come inside. A friend of mine, she was smoking a joint. I wasn't doing that because, you know, I tried, I tried it. I'm not here, I'm not guilty. Guilty as sin then. And she, and she said, well, I, I smoked a joint with her a couple of times. And all the times I did, it was a bad high. I hate it. I swore by the living God, that he's right here, that I would never do that again. So one time, we were among friends, and they were doing it, and I was completely sober. I was just like, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing drugs anymore. And she was like, come on, Rachel, you know, just, just rest so they can see how you get. I said, no, I'm not going to do that. People pleasing. She goes, please, just do it. Just, just one time, it will go away fast. I just fell for it, and I just took a puff. That thing went, whoa. And all of a sudden, I said the word fear. And when I said the word fear, that thing entered me, it gagged, and I went to puke. I, I felt something entered me. And from that moment, my life was not the same. Okay? Because I said that I was afraid. But I believed it. I'm not afraid now. Don't let your emotions take the best of you because the enemy moves by emotions and he waits for you to be so vulnerable that he wants to jump in. I'm giving you keys right here. Amen. So when you're mad and you're like, oh, this and this and this and that, be careful because in your anger, in your pity, in your, in your depression, in everything that you want to call it, he's going to jump in in your weakest point to take your territory. That was one. The second one, it was when I had the abortions. Demas came in, he said, let me tell you how, he, how I found out about this. It's because on my third session of deliverance, the other two deliverances were public, and this was private. So this one, I didn't understand why this man was asking me questions, but God needed me to get deeper and personal. So this was a private session that God was preparing for me so that I could go deeper about my sins. So he said, tell me about you. And I said, well, I told him my whole life story according to what I thought I should tell him. He said, no, no, that's not it. That's not it. As a matter of fact, we're in the kitchen and this man, powerful man of God, is to show you that you don't need to be, oh, you know, you don't need to have all of that. All you need to know who you are in Christ to knock these things out. And he knew how much he was in Christ, how, how, how much of his value in Christ, that while he was performing my deliverance, he was fixing himself a sandwich. We were in the kitchen. I was convert, I, I, I became a Christian in the kitchen. I got delivered my last session in the kitchen. So I better be cooking up something here, right? <laughs> so she left the kitchen right now. But this is what really happened. When I said to him, all my life story, he told me that none of those things were, you know, that were tormenting me. And I said, well, the only thing I haven't told you is that I had two abortions. And he goes, that's it. He goes, the demons came inside of you when you were unconscious. And I said, what? And then he just didn't say anything else. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't want me to say anything else. He just said, that's where I have got in. Then all of a sudden, he just starts talking to them and asking them their identity, how, you know, where did they got, just to make sure, I guess, you know, how they got in there and their names. And I was aware of all this, ladies and gentlemen. I was aware. God, let me see this so I could speak to you tonight. I was aware. My tongue was sticking out like this, and my eyes were rolled back. And all I could say, God, in my head, it was like, Lord, why is this man keep asking them questions? And while I was thinking, that thing was talking through my mouth. It was the most odd thing. Because that thing was talking, it was in my voice. But I was awake. I don't know what pleasure you have with your sin, but they are not worth the ride. You may not think they get possessed and you think that is you, but some of you is not you. I'm talking to a demon that if you allow God to go through right now and the word go in, there is no kingdom divided. That thing will leave and I will tell you how to stay free. Amen. Amen. Because that happened to me. And that man just told that thing with just to exit quietly. And even though I just flipped that chair, boom, 
My sister told me they don't want my hand swole like like a, a size of of, 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 of <laughs> what is the biggest football player that we know? Sha uh, Sha yeah. Like my hand swole so huge. And she says your face wasn't yours. Cause she saw it. She saw it. And then this is what I asked. After I was delivered, I felt something left. And he rebuked it, he rebuked it to the uttermost. This is what he said. When I when, when I got up from there, all I asked was this. How? Because I, now I know the truth. I, I, you know, you know, I mean, look at me, because it's true. I didn't know demons could go in, but now I know because I saw them. I felt them. I, I know, I know. But this is what, what happens. When I got up from there, I don't want to know anything about demons. All I asked was, how do I keep them from coming in? That was my question. Thank you, sir. Thank you, whatever. I am free. How do I keep them from coming in? Word. And the guy couldn't tell me. The pastor couldn't tell me. I went back to my church. I said, Pastor, this happened to me, this and this and that. How do I keep them from coming in? Silence. I told my sister. I told my spiritual mom. And nobody could tell me how to keep them out. And I cried. And I said, Lord. And I remember saying this so hard to him. I said, I don't ever want to be possessed again. I don't want to ever be possessed again, Lord. I don't want to ever be possessed again, Lord. Can I tell you that was the reason, one of the reasons why I knew when, when, I, when the adultery came that, and all that stuff, I knew, I knew that I knew that, that I had the fear of God so in my life because I said, God, I don't want to be in this situation. I know I'm going to hell. I said, well, I am in this situation, God, and I don't know how I got here, God, but I am asking you please to release me. And that's the truth of my prayer when I went through the adultery. And that's why it lasted so short because I was believed for my soul because I saw the demons trying to come in. And I knew because of what the Lord told me that night. He said, go and read Luke 11. And he said, the spirit that comes out. And he says, you need to keep your house furnished. And I said, well, with what? With what? Did he not know? And he said, with what you're reading right now, the word is what keeps you free. Put it everywhere. And I just started to read the word. You see my journals, they're full of the word. I have journals in there that are full of the word. In Spanish, whatever church, I was just word, word, word. I still do the word. But this is what the Lord said lately. I need to go deeper. I need to go deeper. You know why he wants me to go deeper? Because we are dealing with demons that we have never seen before. And they are going to be greater release. So I come to tell you that the reason why I'm preaching this word is that if you don't know about the small demons, <laughs> okay, but let me tell you, they are, they're it's getting, oh, we haven't seen the demons that are coming yet. And the level of word that we have is not enough. We need to get stronger because the, the church itself is lacking the word. And that's why the demons not, are not out there. They are in the church. Because there's, there's no bread in the house of bread. Mm -hmm. And it's the truth. People are full of this, but not of this. People are full of this, not of this. You cannot rebuke the enemy with this. Oh, I have stuff, Christian stuff. I have YouTube. I don't care. I'm a YouTube fan. But let me tell you. T.D. Gates cannot rebuke my demon for me. Joyce Meyer cannot rebuke the demon. I am encouraged by the word they give me, but I need to get my word for myself and my life because they don't know what I'm going through. If you don't get in here, you're already lost. And they are going to come in. I am not trying to scare you. I'm trying to tell you the word. The only way to keep yourself clean is to grab it with all you got. Because I don't care if you think that you're firm, the Bible says, whoever thinks they're firm, why do we say? Careful. Be careful lest you fall. Lest you fall. So I don't want to scare you. I want to scare you into the kingdom if I shall scare you. <laughs> this is what John E. says. Those who, those who experienced deliverance either came or were brought to Jesus. Okay? I was brought to Jesus. 
and I experienced deliverance. Those demons left me. I, am, I have Jesus in my heart. I have the word in my heart. I am feeding on the word. I will stay free. Okay? But listen, someone has to take that initiative. If there are areas in my life where I feel like the enemy is trying to just slap me around, I need to take the initiative. It all begins with a decision. If you know that the enemy is, like in Spanish, sarandiando, if he's going making circles around you, you cannot allow passivity to rob you of deliverance. You must open your mouth. I say, open your mouth. Open your mouth. Your deliverance is closed in your mouth. But what are you going to say? The word. You had to bring the word. There are many people frustrated, frustrated in their life. How many of you are frustrated? There are areas in my life, I gotta be honest yes. with you, with all my sanctified self here. I tell you, the reason why I am frustrated because you know what? I need to go higher. I cannot stay in baby level. That what used to work before, it cannot work right now. I am moving, I'm growing, and things are uncomfortable. Like the woman that is pregnant. If the woman after nine months has a baby there, there is a situation, and something either is going to die, or she's going to die, but something's dying. So there's going to be a breakthrough somehow. You get me, right? Yes. So if you are frustrated in your life, you need to just start just saying, God, what is the word that I need to deliver this? Okay. But deliverance is the children's word. It is the children's bread. It's through the word that you be delivered. That's what I want to leave you with. If you think that there are demons and you're doing strange stuff and you know that you are not acting the way you should, that you open a door, well, you know what? You don't need me. You don't need nobody else. You need your self-deliverance. Or get to somebody that you know that they have the power to. But that decision is yours when you want to get out of where you are. I don't longer want to think like this, Lord. I don't want to longer do this, Lord. I don't longer want to watch this, Lord. I don't longer want to do these things that are for the enemy, and you know them because they don't bring peace. And you cannot blame others over them because he lives in my house, because she lives in my house. Well, you know what? When somebody, you know, I could, as one, as one that we are, me and Eddie, whatever my mistakes are will not affect Eddie in, in his, when he's up there. My salvation is mine. You see, the Bible says that one will be in, 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 in the bed and the one will go, you know, because you know what? If the trumpet sound, if I'm ready and he's not, let me put it in if he's ready, I'm not, you know, one is going to stay behind. We are not one that way, honey. Your salvation is your salvation. And you need to just come out clean. Please come out clean. Tonight, I'm telling you, your deliverance in your mouth, but your mouth needs to be full of this. And you need to make a decision to really stand on it so that you can see the glory of God. This is the thing I, with all respect, this is where I'm at. Don't worry. Trust my Bible. This is where I'm at. And this is no disrespect. Because, you know, if I'm not there right now in my heart, if I'm not standing in my heart, then you know what? It doesn't mean anything. Okay? It doesn't mean anything. If Sorry if you think this is disrespect. I'm sorry. This is, this is, I feel so amazing right now because this is where I'm standing in the word. It saved my life. And that is my position in my supernatural. Hallelujah. You may stand up. I'm going to pray for you. I urge you, hallelujah, tonight, strongly, stay with us, Lord. For it is near evening. And right now, it's so late right now, right? 9.30. People are getting ready to go out. We are ready to just say, Lord, stay for us, with us forever. That night is young, Lord. <laughs> that night is young. Let us read the word when we get home and let us start getting acquainted. I no longer want to be Father's love, hearing or believing, Lord Jesus. I want to believe you and take you up as your word, Lord. As your word, Lord. I urge you strongly to stay with us tonight, Lord. And I thank you for your word that does not come back void. I thank you that your word is complete, Lord. I thank you that your word is perfect, Lord. I thank you for the word is unadulterated and pure and undivided, Lord. I thank you. 
I thank you that the word is already settled, Lord Jesus. The word is settled in heaven, Lord. Hallelujah. And your word will not pass away, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father, that everything will wither, Lord. Hallelujah. And things will fade, Lord Jesus. For your word will never fade, Lord, nor wither. Give us passion for your word in this last day as things get worse, as demons are being released, Lord. And that's, no, that's biblical, Lord Jesus. But we are not afraid of the dead and days, Lord Jesus. We are not afraid of darkness, Lord, because Father, we are the we are the, the we are walking with the light of lights and of life, Lord. We are the reason why you wrote the word, Lord Jesus, so we could have a guiding light. I thank you. I'm in love with you, Jesus. How many are in love with the word? Yeah. Hallelujah. You know the word is Jesus. That when you open the word, if you read, you know what? I stood on Jesus. You know. I stood on Jesus. I stood on Jesus. Hallelujah. I stood on his word. I stood on his word. I stand on his word. Hallelujah. He is my foundation. It is my foundation. Hallelujah. Lord, give me greater passion. Make, let me have more time with it, Lord Jesus. Father, let me eliminate distraction. That's why I pray for tonight for those that are watching, God, and those here. Let us just make your word first, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Let us have passion for it, God. Oh, Father, let us just, you know, just, 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 just get in an adventure with it, Lord. Oh, let us find the healing that we need, the deliverance that we need, the financial breakthrough that we need, God, the friends that we need, God, everything that we need, Lord. Oh, Father, God, even, even for our enemies, Lord, let us find how to deal with them here, God. Oh, Holy Spirit, you didn't leave us orphaned, God. You left us the word through your spirit, Lord, and we thank you for it. We appreciate it, and we thank you, Lord, and we, we urge you so strongly tonight, please, God. Oh, let us... Let us fellowship even greater tonight in the coming weeks and months and years or because of tonight, Lord. We are free, God. We deliver ourselves, so we don't need the pastor, Lord, to lay hands, Lord, because tonight, Lord Jesus, we look to that situation, God, and we won't be slow here. We wouldn't think that it's a ghost, Lord, because we know if the word said it, Lord Jesus, it will come complete, complete, do complete circle until it delivers what it said it will because we are standing on it. We thank you, God. We thank you. We are your sheep, Lord. Sound the motors, God. Run through it, Lord, because we go running after you, God, because you are the word. In Jesus' name, and I bless you, and I bless you, and I bless this house. Amen. Amen. Be healed. Amen. 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 Amen.